it's Commander Ricardo, and welcome to Jameson Memorial and Elite Dangerous 2.4 The Return. Now, the Type 10 was released, and this is my look at a Type 10 loadout. It's not definitive, things are going to change over time. This is what I thought I would kit it out with. Now, if you haven't already done so, can you click the like and subscribe button? And also be active in the comments section, but be kind as well, so I know what sort of things you're looking for, I can do more videos about. So into the outfitting section then. So a lot of conjecture with the old Type 10. Some of people in the community are saying, oh, it's just a Type 9 with a spoiler on it and all the rest of that sort of thing. But yeah, okay, you can see it draws its similarities from the Type 9 and let's not go down that rabbit hole. It is what it is. We've got what we've got. If you want something completely different, let's wait for the old Chieftain. So I'm gonna start fitting out some utilities. So, a shutdown field neutralizer. Gotta have one of those if you're gonna go Thargoid killing. And then also, you need a Xeno scanner for scanning those Thargies. So, with that in mind as well, there's also other stuff to explore and do with that ship. Heat sinks as well. Now, the Type 9 used to run quite hot. What would the Type 10 be like? We're only really going to know once we get into combat. Now here's a little tip. Heat sinks are good to dissipate heat. We all know this. But all this corrosive damage you get when battling Thargoids, like what we can see on some of the ships we've seen, and some of the ships that you've seen that have been battered in fleets, by superheating your ship and then releasing a heat sink, you can actually get rid of that damage. You can cook it off. So a little bit of top tip there for you. So let's carry on fitting out what we're going to put in the utility section. So far we've got heat sinks. I think a good old point defense would be quite good. Other people are going to be shooting stuff at us, not just Thargoids. So a point defense, I think, is going to be the way forward. Manifest scanners, not too interested in all that. But I think a kill warrant scanner might be needed. I'm going to go for an A-rated kill scanner. Or shall I go for a D-rated one? A or D? D is lighter, A is better. Hmm. D it is. Weight. Weight is very important when kitting out a ship. That'll affect your jump range. And then some shield boosters in the final slots. And I'm going to go for A-class shield boosters. Can try and maximise the amount of hit points this shield and this ship possibly has. Now, there's always where you can make things better. You can make it pure combat and nothing else. But it has to be some sort of like a multi-role affair because other people are going to come at you. NPCs, in-game players, griefers. You know the sort of people. They can say, hey, look, that guy's bought a really big ship and spent loads of money on it. And he's got like a 15 million rebuy. Woohoo! Let's take him out, baby. You know, you're not flying around in Battlestar Galactica, are you? So, on to core internals now. I think military-grade alloys are the way forward. The Thargoids don't seem to do damage one way or another, so going for reflective or uh, reactive or mirrored surfaces might give you a disadvantage. Military-grade composite gives you an advantage across the board. So I've gone for military-grade on this ship. Power plant, where we can certainly do better than the 6E that we're fitted. So we're going to go straight in, 142 million. <sighs> oh, the money's going down. The money's going down. Yeah, we got to have that. You got to have, you got to have a lot of power, right? Um, because that's just the way forward. And then thrusters. Not going to bother that just yet. Frame shift drive. Well, you got to have one that's better than that's being fitted. Seven A is going to give us nineteen. 0.67 light years at the moment, but we're still outfitting. Into life support as well, and the power distributors. Power distributor, you got to have a good one, because that's what your weapons are running off. That's what everything else is running off. And when it comes down to it, you need a good power distributor. You want to get the maximum amount of weapon burn and shield recharge rate you possibly can. And of course, you can go engineering these things. Sensors, I'm not too heavily retire, uh, reliant on sensors. And you can also engineer them, especially with Jameson in system. If you unlock that engineer, I'm going for a 4D. 
Now, optional internals. It comes, you can have a grade 8 cargo rack, should you want to. You know, grade 8. I'd rather go for a shield generator. Now, these are going to be a big old chunk of change, and I'm burning through my many, like my missus at a Christmas shopping market. It's unbelievable. But I've got one, I think, in my store, and I just need to have it shipped to the station. So, the basic discovery scanner as well. Yes, I'm sure I've got one of those knocking around in my store. No need to go buying one, I think, but time to start using and reusing some of the stuff that I've already had off all the other ships. Something I want to fit as well with this ship is a anti-corrosive cargo bay. Now, these are only generally bought from Palin, but I've got quite a few in my store as well, so I'll get them over. In my stored modules, there's my shield generator. It has been engineered. It's an 8E, but hey, so what? Um, it's better than the one that I've got, and I'm going to fit that out in the top slot. So let's go through the store and get some things shipped to the station. And then once I've gone through all that, when I come back, I can start fitting it out. So I'm back. I took the old dog for a walk and then came back and all my stuff, or most of my stuff, has arrived back in station. Which is great. So, okay, let's get that cargo rack, that corrosive resistant cargo rack in. Just in case there's anything that I can pick up, anything thargoidy. There's a couple of probes around in system. We're going to transfer the hull reinforcement packs, the military slots as well. Make most use of those. I've got some engineered beam lasers. Some of the empty internal compartments. Got an advanced discovery scanner. And I've got some AX missile racks. Now the AX missile racks, I'm not exactly sure how good they are for thrashing a Thargoid. Um, I'm probably going to go with cannons. But I'm going to put some beam lasers, and I've got an engineered beam laser here as I mentioned. Because it's probably worthwhile having at least some conventional weaponry there. Should someone try and do me a bit of damage while I'm out and about. I mean, because the ship's so big and it's quite lumbering. Even though it's more manoeuvrable than what you think it would be, it's still a lumbering old beast as a weapons platform. You're going to need something to, to at least fire, fire back. You can't just throw rocks at the thing. So in the medium hard points as well, I'm going to go with... Do you know what? I'm going, to, I, I'm going to put a missile rack in, I think. Just for the time being. In this medium hard point, I'm going to see what I do about flak. And put a remote release flak launcher in. Not sure whether to go with turrets or just single fire. Um, not entirely sure what I should be doing that. I might change that to a turret um, in a later revision. But I'm going to go for the AX multi cannons. Now, I don't really want to go for the fixed ones. Even though, you know, the Thargoid's a big old unit. I might just go for the turrets. They're a bit more expensive. Well, they're three times more expensive exactly what they are um, but you know that might just be ease of use because I'll be concentrating on flying the ship and doing everything else and it's that everything else being the problem and with a ship like this there's going to be a huge rebuy stake for it especially with all the gear I've got on it because you want to get it as good as you possibly can aren't you really so AX multi cannons it is and we're going to fit them out in turret mode. Have them only fire on the target. Now my money is depleting. Down to 94 million. Oh no, I hear some of you say. Not 94 million. Well yeah, I had about nearly 500 when I came and started this little endeavour. So I think as well that's going to be done by Frontier to try and level people out, try and separate some people from their credits. There are still people who are going to go out and, and, and not bother with this ship, but hey, it's part of the game and it's nearly Christmas, so what are you going to do? And those AX multi-cannons, they do look good. They do look nice, you know, nice twin barrel guns. 
it does look fantastic. Now, something that I haven't been keeping an eye on is mass. And in a moment, I'm going to be throwing a little bit of a curveball here, where they're going to say, nope, you can't have that. You've gone over mass. So mass is very important. So I went back and I did some lightweight modules. Here we go, look, see? Exceeded my mass, or I've exceeded my limit of four experimental weapons. But this is a Thargoid killer. You can't limit me if I've got the many to four experimental weapons. I mean, what sort of a dictatorship is this? So we'll get rid of that missile rack um, and see what else. I think, I think the cannons are probably going to be the best way of going forward with this, if I can get one in. And now it's saying I've exceeded me my maximum amount of mass. So in that case then, time to get in there, get some of those modules um, toned down so I can then come back and um, keep on refitting the weapons. So with a couple of cod, uh, modules now uh, reduced in mass, I'm able to carry on fitting out the weapon section. So we've got an empty medium hard point there. Well, I'm going to transfer a beam laser in. Thank you very much. We'll have some of that. Transfer to ship. Bang, it's in. Um, and it's things like this in this game that, you know, if you don't realise what you're doing, you don't pay particularly paying attention, you can think, oh my god, I can't fit too many weapons, you're going to go out short-handed, and you're going to get your ass blown off. That's not to say I'm not going to get my ass blown off with what I'm doing here. But let's face it, you've got to try and give yourself the maximum amount of edge you possibly can. And these ships are going to need a huge amount of engineering as well. So a few beam lasers as well on the small hard points. AX cannons. More beam lasers. Uh, and some remote release flak launchers on the medium hard points. I'm not sure whether I'm going to change that other one there to a turret. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think I'll go for a turret on that one. Just so it can go off and do its own thing while I'm doing other things. Okay, so that's that then. Just check on the utilities. Yes, shield boosters, point defense, heat sink launchers, xeno scanners, core internal, military, power plant, and all that. Um, life support, I've gone for a D on the life support because it's light. And thrusters, we're going to go for a D. It's an upgrade on what I've got for the E. Spending a little bit more money, but um, it should reduce my weight. I'm certainly not going to go in and, and spend 45 million on 7A thrusters just yet, because I'm going to have to go out and do some serious trading, some serious missions, serious passenger missions as well, to get the money back. Perhaps I'll head over to Maya and do some Professor Palin missions. They're about 10 million a shot. So, I've also gone for um, a fighter bay as well, and I've fitted AX type fighters. Some module reinforcement as well. Some 5D module reinforcement. Your modules are going to start failing. You know, so a bit of reinforcement there is only going to make things better. It's not all just about the hull, it's all about the modules as well. The cargo racks. I mean, time to get rid of some of those. I don't want a hell of a lot of cargo. Um... This is going to be a combat ship, not a trade. If I'm going to do some trading, I'll summon one of my other ships to the station. Though in hindsight, I think I should have fitted some shield cell banks as well. That would help cook off some of the Thargoid corrosive damage. So I may have to go back in and revise what I've put into this video now as I'm narrating over it. and change some choices. And I think the loadout for these ships, they're going to change. The game's going to adapt. I mean, you can imagine a fleet of these ships turning up to attack a Thargoid. I don't think it's going to last very long. Okay, so optional internals. We've got another slot there. Do I go for cargo? I suppose I should. Need a little bit of cargo. There's my Taipan AXF fighters, and I've got two of those. Even though you can only launch one at a time. That's a bit of a fag, isn't it? 
you know, I want to send my crew, get my crew to the fighters, take out that thaggy um, and launch two at the same time. I think that would be fantastic. Whether that will come in a, a future release or what, I don't know. Whether it will be in regard to the carrier ships that will be coming out, again, all these questions are there for Elite and Frontier Developments to answer. Now the limpets as well, prospecting limpets, research limpets, repair limpets, that sort of thing. I mean, I'm not going to go for any of those, not just yet anyway. Um, perhaps I should, if I'm going to go Thargoid killing. Um, that's something I can always research later on. So, what the hell am I going to call this ship? Type 10 Defender doesn't quite just roll off the tongue. And I'm going to follow in my Badger theme. Now, it's a big old unit. So, what about the Bloated Badger? But then, Bloated doesn't sound very healthy, does it? This is a weapons platform. It's a, it's a flying gun. Perhaps the Surly Badger. Might be a better name for this. Anyway, Surly Badger it is. Can always change it later. Got some practical nameplates. We've got all the stickers. Um, exactly. There we are. We're done. Thank you very much. So with all the outfitting out the way, time to take a look round the cockpit and what your pilot's actually going to be sitting in. Nice field of view. Right in the front, a big old bridge. Look at the size of that. I'm a bit surprised they haven't gone for something a little bit more shinier on the Lacon models. It looks like used metal, you know, like it's been around for ages. I mean, that might be the case. Repurposing Type 9s into a Type 10. Who knows? However, if you look at some of the other Imperial ships, it's all nice and sleek lines and shiny metal. And it looks like you're sat in the middle of an iPod. With this... It gives me the impression, although outside you've got all the nice reflectiveness, you know, off the canopy and what have you, inside it does look a little bit like you're sat in a garbage truck. Or a lorry. Some pretty cool animation as well, as the gear goes up and down, your wings flip in and out. Which I think is quite good. It should also aid in getting through some of those station apertures. And underneath the ship, you've also got pods, whether that's for missiles or what, I don't know, additional payload, or whether it's just an aesthetic, I don't know. And a door, there's a door at the bottom, what's that door used for? Oh, I can't wait for the space legs. We want to be walking around our ship. So there you have it, there's my first take at outfit in the Type 10. I'm off to get some engineering done and to see how things go. Laurie Jameson is in system, so that's a natural first stop to get things like the sensors sorted out, kill warrant scanners and the like. Now I've got some materials, so time to go over there and pay her a visit. I've been Ricardo, this has been Really Dangerous and the Type 10. Thanks very much for watching. Not long till Christmas. Keep looking out for some more videos. Fly safe.